hi sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support and hope you all are having an amazing holiday so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about nikki Haley. actually that woman i think i don't even understand but like you know what she just did is just like you know is blatantly racist i mean that shows you their heart number one is that i feel like black people do not have any ally allies and that is on period I mean, I, I'm sure you all already know this because after watching this video, I mean, I am so, 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 so convinced that, I mean, nobody's ever coming out to speak up for black people and what is going on in black community and all that. So she was asked if uh, uh, slavery was the cause of civil war, right? And this woman refused to answer it. She refused to speak up even till she finished the live uh, conference. She was she did not speak up. That was how she dodged the question, and a lot of people really got a lot of questions to ask. Is this really the person coming out for a higher office? Because I do not understand, and that is one of the reasons why I I do not believe in bite pork. You know, sometime when I started this channel, I was like, you know, having bite pork will really be amazing but no uh, there is nothing like bike park because they never ever want to support black people not even for a minute she knew that if she ever accept that the civil war was also uh, uh, i mean slavery was one of the reasons why it happened i mean there should be reparations and so she dodged it let's get into this video so Nikki Haley, the Legion of Doom member who is trying to seek her party's nomination for presidency of the United States, is trying to walk back a statement. No, she didn't walk it back because she didn't make this statement. She's trying to clarify what she meant when asked about what was the cause of the Civil War. Now, today, she says, yes, I know it was about slavery. I'm from the South. But let's take a look at what she said yesterday when asked the direct question about the conflict. Please, um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run. The freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? Now, the mental gymnastics, the pretzel shape bending, and the gaslighting that she just engaged in with that answer should be an Olympic level sport. But then she turned the question around on the gentleman who asked it of her while she's seeking the nomination for presidency of the United States. And his response was priceless. Sorry? I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. What do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. So, Miss Yes, I know it was about slavery. I'm from the South. Why did your answer not contain a reference to it? And then when you were confronted with your answer lacking in that department, you rushed on to the next question. Now, it's not bad enough that we have to suffer the rewriting of history at the hands of white supremacists, but you're a minority woman and you're engaging in the acts of an agent of white supremacy. Now you all have the day you deserve. Straight facts, no chaser. Let's listen to what Nikki Haley knows about American history, and she's running for president. Let's get it. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Please, um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? 
The cause of the Civil War was about how government was going to run. The freedoms of what the people could and could not do. Nikki Haley, what were the freedoms that people could or could not do? Hmm? Did she literally just ask him what he thought the Civil War was all about? Thought? There's no ambiguity about what the Civil War was about. The fuck is this woman talking about? You running for president and don't know the answer to this motherfucking question? Carry on. I'm not running for president. I want to see your view on the cause of the Civil War. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government and what the rights of the people are. And we, I will always stand by the fact that I think government was intended to secure the rights and freedoms of the people. It was never meant to be all things to all people. Government doesn't need to tell you how to live your life. They don't need to tell you what you can and can't do. They don't need to be a part of your life. They need to make sure that you have freedom. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. What do you want me to say about slavery? What you want me to say about slavery? That's the answer to the fucking question, you dipshit. What started the Civil War? Let's educate Nikki real quick. Hey, Nikki Haley, this is what started the Civil War. Slavery, the economics of slavery. Why is it so hard for these motherfuckers to come up with the word slavery? The freedoms you got right. The freedoms of black people to be fucking free and not enslaved and working for free labor. That's the reason why the Civil War started. And for you motherfuckers that just don't know your history, let me, let me school you on game real quick. Uh, the Civil War broke out because of states' rights to own slaves. Because the North was freeing slaves and paying them a living wage. Better yet, a wage. I don't know how much it helped them live, but a wage. Therefore, they paid taxes and all the above. What happened to the South? They still had slaves, free labor. So the South was getting wealthier than the North. North wasn't having that. So they gave the South an ultimatum. You either set these slaves free or you pay them for their work. And the South said, fuck you, North. And they woke up and chose violence. But here's the fun part. They chose violence and they were winning against the North for a minute. The North reached out to whom? Oh, their black population. That's right. And they asked the black population to help win the war. This is the North. And if they did and we won the war, they would set us free. First, they're supposed to be in Liberia. But we could thank the brother Frederick Douglass for us being freed in America instead. And guess what, South? You got your motherfucking asses beat. And guess by whom? Black people. That's right. The Civil War was filled with white people fighting white people. And then all of a sudden, the North was losing. And it's black people. Our ancestors got together, was handed a gun, and went out there and beat the fuck out of the South. Learn your history. You're about to repeat it. Don't know the facts? Go look them up, you dipshit. As always, I speak facts. Straight facts. No chaser. Fuck your feelings. Me, 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 me. I have my hand raised. Please, professor, let me let you know. The purpose of the Civil Rights War had nothing to do with slavery. And please do not put that in there. That's the history books that they wanted to tell you when you was in elementary and also in middle school and high school. It was because it was a clash between the Union and the Confederate. They had a clash of fighting. The Union wanted to be a united front with all the states. If you look at it, back before slavery, most of the states had their own um, money. And they, and here was the thing. Most of the states was not even paying taxes to each other. They were collecting the taxes, doing their own trading, but this was the confusion. Not the proper fundamental resources and financial. Now, if you're forming a government, you got to make sure that the body is able enough to have financial. And they also have to basically gather up everything in the banking system. Apparently, the South... And even the Midwest and certain parts of the North, they were all segregated. They had people coming and reaching and talking to each other to make laws. But the financial situation was a problem. Now the South was making a production of money. And they were making it through natural resources. As a matter of fact, the South was going to be the first to be industrialized. Because the fact that they were trading back and forth. 
Now the essentials of the slaves were one thing and the agriculture and the natural resources were another. But here was the thing. The North saw that there was not a united front. Considering the, the government was located in Washington, D.C., which is a part of what state? In Baltimore, right? Now, moving right along, how can you run a government and meanwhile you have people are not paying taxes? That was one of the situation, not a united government, not a united front. So that's what a war. They use the slaves as a scapegoat because they stopped the production of the import export when they were trading overseas to the Western area. Cause some of the South was doing a lot of international trading and stuff. The North was doing it as well too. However, the South was doing it more. And also they want to stop the production of slavery. So they use it leverage. So they use the, scape, the, the slaves as a scapegoat. Know your history. You know, for her to sit there and be baffled of it, that goes to show she didn't know her history. And to me, that was a real tough conversation because a lot of people were misled and misguided with the educational system when it came to that. They used the slaves as a, as a crutch, but no. Behind the scenes, if you go back to the time when you look at the, um, the, the, the money, which is the, um, the, the currency, each South and various parts of the state had their own different money. And the money was not good in certain parts of the state. So if you lived in Florida and you had your own currency versus with Georgia, it's not the same. And you're holding all the taxes. So how are they going to be able enough to able enough to have a stronger front? So this is where up north was saying no. Not only you guys have to be united with us, you also have to make sure you change the currency and make it to be one currency. And that was the fight. The other fight was the South didn't want the North in their business. And they believed that the production of the money and the commodity and everything has to be in one sector. Even though you're making the money, you still have to pay taxes. Because at the time, after their independence, they had made a law that they had to pay the taxes to England. Okay? And if they're not paying the taxes, who are they going to have to? So it was all about the North saying, no, you got to control. We have to control the money. We have to control the regulation. And if we're making a law, the law has to be adjusted to all men. And they didn't like that. So that's where the, the fight came. The slavery had nothing to do with this. Now, if you want to kick her, there was also situations where they wanted the federal government to give them protection. Because at the time, and if you do the research of the Seminole War, the Gullah War and all that stuff, there was no protection. Because during that time, it was every man for itself. And this is where the North was saying, okay, but you said that you wanted to do all of this. So why is it that you want our help now? Okay. And that's where it was. It was all about uniting America, making uniting as far as with the economical, the currency, the military, all of that stuff of a united front. Now, if you look at now in 2023, you see the South trying to break away and they're coming up with their laws and stuff like that because they want to be entirely away from the United States. They don't want a united front. They want to make sure they can make their own laws when it comes to judicial system, executive system, legislative, and all that stuff. But they get, they fail to understand that most of their laws have to be administrated and also has to be practiced through federal, through the constitution. Okay. And that's what's biting some of them because they wish they could be segregated. They wish they could have their own currency. They wish they didn't have to be regulated underneath the federal government. But they can because there's something called the Constitution of Law. The stuff that there was amended. So slavery had nothing to do with this. And I hope she didn't open up slavery. Because if she opened up slavery, that's opened up a kind of worms where we're going to say, okay, she admitted that it was because of slavery. This were, there, there is where reparations are going to come in. So that's why it's very tough why she turned around and had to sit back and look on the floor. Nikki Haley just refused to acknowledge that slavery was the cause of the Civil War and actually even got testy with the man who asked her the question. I'm going to play the clip for you, but I want to note two quick things. This matters more than you think. We currently, we just had a poll come out a few weeks ago that showed that young Americans, one in five young Americans, believes that the Holocaust was a myth. 
It's historical denialism and gaslighting from Republicans just like this that caused those outcomes. Number two, just last year, Nikki Haley called for the deportation of US-born African-American Senator Raphael Warnock. So this is who she is. This was not a casual mistake. Watch the clip and let me know what you think. Please, um, what was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run, the freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? I'm sorry? I'm not ready. I mean, I think it always comes down to the role of government. We need to have capitalism. We need to have economic freedom. We need to make sure that we do all things so that individuals have the liberties so that they can have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to do or be anything they want to be without government getting in the way. What do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. Nikki Haley just gave the single worst answer I've ever heard in my entire life when asked about the root cause of the Civil War. What was the cause of the United States Civil War? Well, don't come with an easy question or anything. I mean, I think the cause of the Civil War was basically how government was going to run. The freedoms and what people could and couldn't do. What do you think the cause of the Civil War was? Okay, here's a free tip. When you get asked a question and your answer is, what do you think the answer is? It's a telltale sign that you don't actually know what you're talking about. And hard as it may be to believe, her answer got even worse. I'm sorry? I'm not ready what do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. So throughout her entire answer, she doesn't once mention slavery. And when the guy calls her out, she says, what do you want me to say about slavery? Next question. The true tragedy of this is twofold. One, Nikki Haley is South Asian. Her parents could only immigrate to the United States because black civil rights leaders fought for the Immigration and Nationalization Act of 1965. Without black civil rights leaders, she would not be here. Her father even taught at an HBCU. And two, she's a former governor of South Carolina. When you look at the Articles of Secession from South Carolina, the number one reason they cite is because of the Northern state's hostility to the institution of slavery. The bottom line is this, if mentioning the mere existence of slavery will make you lose votes, then guess what? You're catering to white supremacists. The Republican Party's base is so small and is shrinking so much that Republican candidates for president can't even risk offending people who are sympathetic to slavery and Confederacy. I mean, seriously, Nimrata Paley was asked what was the cause of the Civil War, and she hem and haw. She couldn't answer slavery. It's a one-word answer. She couldn't even answer that because, God forbid, she offend the Republican base, which is made up of slavery sympathizers and people who think the Confederacy was great. Same people who lose their fucking minds if you don't stand for the national anthem and if you dare don't say, I love the troops during... Veterans Day are the same ones who love a country that killed American troops. Go figure. That's the Republican Party. So this is, this is all I got from this video. And the reality is that sometimes you just think these people really just want to like, you know, mess around. And uh, number one is that she knew what she was doing. And... Uh, and it's quite unfortunate that she did not even bother to clarify her response during the live conversation, right? And she knew exactly what she was, what she knew what she was doing. So what she only did was to look for a way to cover up. And if you want her to, like, you know, you know all these people, sometimes you think you are, they think they are smart, but they are not even smart enough. She knew that if she ever says something like slavery, then she knew that there should be reparations and the rest of it, right? And uh, 
the fact that uh, sometimes I feel like black people really do not have any, any ally because tell me what in the nonsense was that woman doing? That woman is Indian American, right? And uh, instead of, I mean, she would rather not speak the, why would she speak the truth? Like, because she is not for the minority. And it is so sad how the minority want to be white so bad. Because instead of them to please their own people, they would rather please the white people, colored people. So that also makes her a current. They do not ever want to identify. I mean, a fifth grade child is even smarter than with that response she get. It's really very smart. And now, that also boils down to when I, I also do not believe anything that got to do with, uh, you know, uh, BIPOC. BIPOC is just a mess. There is nothing like BIPOC and I do not, um, I do not endorse it. I love the fact that black people are black people and every other person is a person of color or whatever you choose to call yourself and all that. Because these people sincerely are one of the problems black people are facing. Number one is that I am sure, I don't know how to say this, but black people really did a whole lot for them, you know? I mean, it's sad that black people have to be getting all this kind of betrayal all the time. People that black people helped never for a day come back or try to like, you know, come in, like, you know, stand together with black people to fight what is fighting us. Number one is that in the end, she is still not a white woman, you know, and they also do not see her any different. So she coming out to say whatever she said or trying to dodge away from the answer that she was supposed to, like, you know, answer as a human being. Then she started dancing around and then ended up not answering the question. Black people do not have any ally, and that is just a period. This is more like Olympic level ignorance because, like, what was that that she was doing? Like, what was that answer that she gave? What was that? Why did she even wave the answer away? Why did she not speak up? Why did she not talk? Because she is not for black people, she is not for minority. And now you see how how they are perpetuating this uh, white supremacy. Like, you know, I am sorry to say this, but that is it. Asian Americans are, I don't know, but I see them as very problematic people, especially when it comes to politics, when it comes to where they are supposed to speak up. Or, I mean, like, you know, you see them. That is when you will know that they got nothing to do. Like, you know, there is nothing minority. Like, they are just... They just, they just don't want to be minority. They want to be part of the people that, like, you know, that, uh, that give out the instructions, like, like that is the pump color. But they cannot be pump color because their skin color is obvious. You know, you are not white, you are not white. No matter how far or how hard you work to, like, you know, betray black people and your own, because she also betrayed her own people, you know? No matter how hard she works to betray her own people, she can still never be white. Really, they don't care. They really do not care. And I am not sure tomorrow they are going to wake up to care. So for me, all I, am, all, all I am agitating for, like if you all see me talking about this politics, like I am probably going to get... See, anybody that will not benefit my people... Or people, my people, sorry, anybody that my people will not benefit from, I am not endorsing it. Like, I am never, ever going to endorse it. Because what in the nonsense is all this, this woman came out to do? Make it make sense. Because it's not even making any sense. So she should just change her name to, and change her, even if she can also, Anyway, if she blushes, I, I see you all in my next video. Bye for now.